Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the solemnity of the anniversary of the dedication of this church, the Cathedral of Manila. Together with Mary, our Immaculate Mother, let us thank God for the Manila Cathedral, the Mother Church of our country. May our prayers and devotions inside this church spread and overflow so that God may be known in our country and in the whole world to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the, the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who year by year renew for us the day when this, your holy temple, was consecrated, hear the prayers of your people and grant that in this place for you, there may always be pure worship, and for us, fullness of redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. In the presence of the whole assembly of Israel, Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord and stretching out his hands towards heaven said, O Lord, God of Israel, not in heaven above nor on earth beneath is there such a God as you. True to your covenant and your kindness towards your servants when they walk wholeheartedly in your way. Yet, will God really live, will men on the earth? Why, the heavens and their own heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Listen to the prayer and entreaty of your servant. O Lord, my God, listen to the cry and to the prayer your servant makes to you today. Day and night, let your eyes watch over this house, over this place of which you have said, My name shall be there. Listen to the prayer that your servant will offer in this place. Hear the entreaty of your servant and of Israel, your people, as they pray in this place. From heaven, where your dwelling is, hear, and as you hear, forgive. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell 
in the tents of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crossed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are also being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My dwelling shall be with them, says the Lord. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made the whip out of cords, and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we commemorate the great event of 
the reconstruction of the Manila Cathedral after the war and its consecration, its dedication in 1958. This year, we are celebrating the 63rd anniversary of the consecration of this cathedral. As we commemorate this event in the history and life of the church here in Manila, let us reflect on what the role of churches are or have. Ano nga ba ang papel? Ano nga ba ang ginagampanan ng mga simbahan, ng mga gusaling simbahan sa ating pananampalataya? Let us first turn to our first reading from the first book of Kings. Solomon, when they were consecrating the temple in Jerusalem, said in his prayer that God of Israel, he said, not in heaven or on earth can our temple contain you. The heavens cannot even contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Sabi ni Solomon, ikaw ay Diyos. Masyadong malaki ang Diyos para magkasya sa kalangitan. Paano pa kaya itong templo na ginawa ko para sa Diyos? My dear brothers and sisters, what does God tell us in this reading? The reading reminds us today that the temples, the churches, and shrines that we build are not built to contain God inside. God cannot be contained inside a building. Our churches should become centers where God can spread and overflow outside the church. Hindi ko itinayo ang simbahan na ito para ikulong natin ang Diyos sa loob. Sapagkat hindi ko makukulong ang Diyos sa loob ng simbahan na ito. Sabi nga ni Solomon, masyado kang malaki kahit ang lupa at langit, hindi kasya ang Diyos. Paano pa kaya ang simbahan at templo na ginagawa natin? My dear brothers and sisters, our churches, our temples are not built to contain God. God's presence should spread and overflow from these churches. In our gospel reading today, that was the mistake of the money changers, of those who are selling oxen, sheep, and doves in the temple. They imprisoned God inside the temple because they are earning money with God imprisoned inside the temple. So they want God to remain inside the temple and they selling and doing their business outside the temple. Parang sinasabi nila sa Diyos, Diyan ka lang, huwag mo kaming pakialaman dito. Mas maiging nariyan ka sa templo sapagkat pinagkakakitaan ka namin ng pera. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop imprisoning God inside our churches. 
Bring God into your homes. Bring God into your offices. Bring God into your schools. Bring God even into politics. Bring God into your traffic, into traffic. Bring God to everywhere. God is so big, we cannot imprison Him inside this church. This is where we meet God. But God's presence spreads and overflows outside this church. That is why in our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, he said, while we live, the life of Jesus is manifested in our mortal flesh. Even if we are just earthen vessels, in our bodies, in our life, the life of Jesus is manifested. St. Paul did not say that Jesus is contained inside our temples. No. St. Paul reminds us that our bodies are God's temple. And wherever we go, we carry the life of Jesus in our life. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop imprisoning God inside our churches. Churches are not built to contain God inside. Churches are built so that the presence of God might overflow and spread from this church. We are very happy that now the Manila Cathedral, the mission of the Manila Cathedral is not only contained inside this structure. Many of us are watching this Mass online and we do not only have a physical community here, but through the spread of the internet and social media, we are able to reach out to many people in different places. The Manila Cathedral community cannot be contained here. The Word of God cannot only be contained inside this church. This is only where the mission starts. And God would spread. God would overflow from this church. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop imprisoning God inside our churches. The love of God should go out and spread and overflow from our churches. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate the dedication of our Mother Church, the Manila Cathedral, let us bring our prayers to the Father 
who had called us to be living stones in our need, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that the Holy Church in every place may offer worthy and reverent worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that all who gather in this church may find grace and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that those who care for the church may persevere in their service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that we may always revere and respect every sanctuary of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer, that the benefactors and all the departed who worshipped in this church may enjoy eternal light and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, as we celebrate the dedication of the Manila Cathedral, grant the petitions of our community gathered once more before your altar. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Recalling the day when you were pleased to fill your house with glory and holiness, O Lord, we pray that you may make of us a sacrificial offering always acceptable to you through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in this visible house that you have let us build and where you never cease to show favor to the family on pilgrimage to you in this place, you wonderfully manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us. Here, you build up for yourself the temple that we are and cause your church spread throughout the world to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body till she reaches her, her fullness in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so with the countless ranks of the blessed in the temple of your glory, we praise you, we bless you, and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. May the people consecrated to you, O Lord, we pray, receive the fruits and joy of your blessing that the festive homage they have offered you today in the body may redound upon them as a spiritual gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today in memory of the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings now and forever. Amen. May he who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered together in his Son, grant that you may become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Thus may you be made thoroughly clean so that God may dwell within you and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ang katarungay, halikig ni 
pinaglihimay at pag-asa ng dukay abot ka Kasakit at kadustahan Ang iyong pag-arot na ay Maria, ito na nga ang 